the old V6 interceptors finally let me down big time. Went out this morning after a really cold night and the car completely packed up. Um, and it was only restarted by the RAC man belting the hell out of the fuel tank because the fuel pump's packed up. The fuel pump is on the top of the fuel tank. So that looks like it's going to be really difficult to get at. So what most people do is they cut a hole in the floor pan and that is exactly what I'm going to do. To get to the floor pan it's underneath the squab seat. You need to pull the squab seat out and it's got clips here in the front just under here and you can just, if you're strong, pull them out. Probably need two hands for that job. Right, I've popped the seat out. That was harder than I remember it. On the front of the seat, there's a plastic socket here and that locates with a metal clip. And you can just pull that out with both hands. In the bottom of the pan is a hook and that hooks into this metal bracket just here and you have to use your knee and push the seat so it unhooks it. One on the other side is a real bugger that really did not want to come off. I'll just peel this out. Looking down in this inspection port we've got this large cluster of wires Then there's a plastic pipe which I'm thinking is actually the fuel pipe and then there's another one here electrical supply with tank written on it and this is the tank itself and the tank is made out of plastic so if I'm going to be cutting into this I'm going to have to be really careful obviously not to drill any holes into the tank or cut any of the wires it would have been so much better if they just put this port directly over where the pump is so that you can retrofit the pump really easily later not really thought through that one. I found an article on the internet by a very helpful American chap who shows where the center of the pump is and it's 15 inches in from the back of the seat that's the metal part of the seat and then it's 15 inches in from the outside of the door trim so 15 by 15 that gives you the middle of the pump what he actually did was he cut through the middle, down and down and opened up so you can see the top of the pump. So I'm going to follow his example and uh, cut an inspection port in this part and then cut the other half. That way there'll be the least amount of cutting and also should be able to fold it back together quite easily. I've cut four small four millimeter holes in the corners. Um, the metal is amazingly soft and it goes through really quickly so I put a depth gauge on my electric drill. I'm now going to open these corners out to about 10mm so I can get a cutting tool in there. I'm going to do it very slowly um, and take it easy. That's the first one cut, that's 10mm and you can see here that it's double skinned because you've got this part overlapped this part so we've got two holes there. It went through it really easily, so you have to be really careful and do it slowly. I'll do the others. So it goes through amazingly quickly. Um, it's more difficult with this stuff. It's like a, a vinyl covering they've put on it. So I've lifted a flap, um, basically because the cutter couldn't go any further than that because the electrical connections are up here. So I can now see exactly where it is. The hole's not big enough, it needs to come down to here. And then obviously I can work out how far to go on this side. Um, I've been using a tool called a nibbler, which goes on your electric drill. 
I bought this years and years ago has a cutting piece in there that, that oscillates the good thing about this is that it's got this metal part here that will not cut through anything like electrical cables so it stops you from uh, damaging any of the electrics it's a lovely piece of kit I've had this 20 years don't use it very often but it makes mincemeat of this the only other option is to use hand cutters but even then you would have probably cut through there which wouldn't have been a good move so the next thing to do is to expand this hole well that's rather annoying I've managed to snap the end off the nibbler I didn't know you could do that I will have to continue with hand tools I'm just finishing this little section off with my hand cutters um, which as you can see produce a spiral of metal as they cut through it um, the only thing is these get terrible blisters and they're really hard work but let's finish that part of it anyway did that left-handed that was impressive okay so we should be just able to lift this open now um, the edges are really sharp so I'm just going to put some gloves on There he is. Filthy as hell. Wouldn't think being under the seat locked up there that you'd be able to get that dirty. Um, so now I can see how much a lump I've got to cut off the other side. I'll have to pull the carpet back, get that out of the way. I've already taken the ends out. I'll have to roll it right back now. Okay, well I've managed to open it up and in the end the hole was seven and a half inches across by roughly seven inches the other way and that completely exposes the top of the tank and then I can roll the metal back later um, as a matter of interest this section here this is actually triple skinned and this is what broke my nibbler and I had to cut it with a junior hacksaw fortunately there's enough clearance in this part of it here to get the hacksaw down in there so that's worth knowing. Also on this side this comes remarkably close to here so you have to be very careful and use hand shears or a nibbler or something that's not going to catch all these pieces. I'm quite impressed with the service of this provider. I ordered a second hand pump um, and it comes with the secondary sender as well and I've got it from X-Type Bits of Blackburn and that's come within two days and I can also see that it's got a warranty with it so happy days. Well this is a second hand unit that I've bought off eBay and you can see that for the 40 quid I paid, including the courier, which is 9.99 of it, they've sent me the pump and sender unit and the secondary sender unit, which sits in the other side of the car. Um, I have no intention of changing that, so that can be a spare part. So this looks all nice and clean um, and in good condition. A bit dirty on the top. Um, there's a part number on there. I'll give that a clean down and um, then connect it up and see if it actually works. To test the new pump I've disconnected the old pump, the electrical part and that's just got a little push down tag in there and it pops apart and I've connected it to the new one. I've left the fuel connected up because I don't want any fuel in the car when I start the car. So if we watch the pump and then turn the car over and see it move so that's all working and it's nice and quiet as well so that's uh, good news to get the unit out you need to undo this ring and I've loosened it off but it is actually really stiff so I've used a piece of timber like this and I've just struck it with a big hammer and done it very gently and you have to turn it about four times until it actually loosens off because obviously there's a seal in there um, I can now smell the petrol 
the uh, tank has got about a third full so what's that four gallons of petrol so you have to be careful lucky today it's freezing cold so it's not going to vaporize everywhere this is the fuel line there's a white press down to release it I'm going to get this released first and then take the fuel line off and then she'll be able to just lift the thing out that's uh, that's the theory anyway so that's loose now fingernail in there Oh, that's going to be hard. Two hand job, that one. Just push that down with a screwdriver. You can see the fuel coming out of it. There's pressure in this system, but it can't pump loads of fuel out because all the fuel lines come up through the top rather than in the old days when the fuel line would be at the bottom of the tank and you'd have to empty the tank. So I've taken the plastic ring off. You can see the green seal underneath. Fuel line's now popped off. Drop that down the side there and this should now just gently lift out but I am aware that there are lots of pipes so this might need to be sort of gently manipulated and moved again a two-handed job so you have to fiddle it about because these pipes are trying to grab hold of it and then you can actually get it up you can see there's actually a lot of petrol in that tank it's a massive tank it takes what 12 gallons and it's about a third full so there's plenty in there. I'm just letting the pump drain out into the tank before I actually try to disconnect it in order to get it out. The smell of petrol is quite overwhelming so make sure you've got all the doors open. I've got to take off the two balance pipes that connect it to the other sender. Fortunately I've got this one to play with and you can see that this one just pops out that's easy enough and then the other one this one just comes around to here to this part and presumably that just pulls off getting this second pipe off from here has proved very difficult these pipes are really brittle and they just do not want to come off I tried heating it up with a hairdryer to soften it up but it just doesn't work so what I've actually done is I've cut a nick through it which has allowed me to loosen it and pull it off. Now on the one that's on the car, the nick is half the length of that. While the pump's out, I've um, covered the hole up with a big thick wadding of an old pair of pajamas, which I can then just chuck away, just to stop it vaporizing and filling the car up with petrol fumes. I've secured that difficult pipe with some uh, galvanized locking wire to make sure that it doesn't come off. Okay, so you just need to fiddle all the pipes and the filter sock and gently drop it back into position. Make sure there's nothing sna snagging it like the other fuel line. And then hopefully that should just go back in. All these little plastic pipes are fighting with you all the time. There we go. Ooh. Now, the thing to remember, obviously, is that we need to put the green seal back in. And also, this arrow lines up with this mark on the top of the tank. Well that's turned out to be a bit of a devil to get back in. The green seal sits in a metal ring which clips onto the underside of this. Um, then you have to force the whole thing down because it's sprung, keep the arrow in line and then do this up. As you can see it's not quite done up tight yet and do this up tight. Right, fuel pipe's back on good and tight. The electrics are back on. Um, the electric terminal has got this slot in the back of it for a connector that slides in and then connects on there. So I'll just pop that back on so that it holds it all in place. I don't really like the way this rises up so high because it's near the metalwork. So I'm going to try and just fold that over a bit flatter. That's all clipped back in place. There's a little metal clip there. That's all correct. That's all correct. I can have a go at starting the car now and see if it actually works. Right, the fuel lines are all starved, so it's probably going to make a bit of a racket. Sweet! Um, I'm not sure what the engine management light is. That's something else to sort out. I think that's to do with the fuse blocks. That's a bit disconcerting. 
I know there's about a third of a tank in there. It does make me wonder whether or not the sender didn't go in the right place. Okay, so I've got the original pump off the car and brought it back and connected it up and checked the sender. And that works fine as it did when the car was running. I've also checked the sender on the pump that's on the car and that does actually give a reading, but I've found that it's much looser um, as though the rheostat isn't connecting that well. So I'm going to have a go at taking the sender off of this one and putting it onto this one just so that I know that it's going to work properly. So the sender is held on with a little bayonet fitting which you just pinch and then it pops out. Then it's a matter of tracing the wires and then undoing these two connectors so that I can use them again. I've slit the insulation with a scalpel blade and then pulled the sleeve back, it just slides because it's so brittle, and then undone the connector and it's one of these types that has a little push tag, so you have to push that down uh, and then it will pull apart. Of course when I put it back together the insulation will be flush inside the tank so there's no chance of it making a false connection. I've also marked up one of the two green ones with a piece of white tape that corresponds to the light yellow one and I'll do that on the same on the other one so that I connect it up the same way around. So that's the swap made and the connections are done up. I found if you turn those over and push them back on they're lovely and solid and they're not going to come off but I've also taken the precaution of putting one either side of this so that they can't accidentally touch together. It's very unlikely that's going to happen but just to make sure. Okay, moment of reckoning. Please work. Excellent. Well, the car has fired up. It's sounding good. It's just dropping off the auto advance. I've still got the engine management light, which I'll need to figure out what that is, but I may be able to just clear that and um, it will reset itself after I've driven it. Getting the panel back takes quite a lot of effort um, and you have to strike it against the, the fold marks in order to get it to go back. Um, this plastic stuff, this all breaks off. I don't really know what it's like, it's like lino, but it's quite brittle. And uh, then I'm going to get some metal tape and seal it back down once I've got it in position. It's all folded in as far as I can get it. It's sprung a little bit there. And I'm now going to seal it up with this metalised tape. Uh, this stuff is called speed tape. It's used to repair aeroplanes. And I've got this off of my dad, who's a former aircraft engineer. Well, that's it all now nicely hermetically sealed. And already the smell of petrol is diminished. So all I need to do now is put the seat back in. When you're putting the seat back in, you have to force feed the two um, seat belt clips, these buckles back through bloody really hard to get through and everything's sharp so watch your fingers that's the hole for the plastic clip the plastic clip pops out and it's actually easier to take them out and then put them back in than it is to try and force the carpet over them right that's it all back together um, to get the front metal staple in the metal clip that's under here I have to use all my weight in both hands and it just popped in. I'm just sitting in the car just to prove to myself that everything's in the right place.